If you guys want the best decks to climb to legend, you've come to the right place. I'm gonna give you the five best decks to climb to legend, and then three, like, Dark Horse decks that I think are better than people give credit for currently. So the first one is Quest Hand Warlock. When the nerfs were first announced, I said that Quest Warlock is going to be the strongest deck in the game because two of its worst matchups were just nerfed, Garot, Rogue, and Mage. And another kind of powerful matchup being Aggro Druid was also nerfed. So I was like, okay, this is going to be the strongest deck in the game. And the win rates show that. This is the highest win rate deck in the game by like a percent according to Hearthstone Replay. And you can use this deck or another version of the deck that doesn't run. Flesh Giants, the Scavengers, Battleground Battlemaster, and the Goldshire Knoll. I like this version a little bit more because even though the other one completes the quest more consistently and actually has an OTK by double activating the Hand of Gul'dan, this one has an added win condition in the mid game with Flesh Giant and Battleground Battlemaster, which can just help you surprise close out games against an opponent that's not expecting it. And even though this only helps you win maybe 1% or 2% more games than the other version, that still makes this one objectively better um, according to all the stats. I think this deck is really powerful. Play it before it gets nerfed or gets kind of changed with the new meta with the new expansion. This is probably the best deck. The next one is Quest Warrior. Quest Warrior is the second best deck in the game according to Horizon Replay, and this is also another class that I said would rise um, with the new nerfs, because this one wasn't touched at all, and again, it had a kind of bad matchup against one of the decks, being Aggro Druid, because they were able to snowball really quickly. But with the nerf, not only is it easier to deal with now with Rancor, um, a fog sail freebooter along with the cannons from the cannoneer and the quest because now you can kill the razor main battle guard with just one cannon it's not only that so it's the matchups a little bit better but it's also being played less because it was nerfed and people refunded some of their dust and or just decided to play another deck because of all that this deck has risen to be or this class as a whole has risen to be the highest win rate class in the game and has the second highest win rate deck in the game. So, yeah, I would highly recommend trying this deck out if you haven't already. Um, you got Bear Oven Rancor for one good removal if things get out of hand. Not to mention infinite value when you finish your quest so you're able to deal with even slower matchups. So, yeah, try this deck out. Next is Libram Paladin. It's basically just a jack-of-all-trades deck that can do basically anything. It's not very aggro, but it's pretty good mid-range, um, and if you get an early Alliance Bannerman out, especially if you, like, coin it out or something, it can be fairly aggressive in its own right. And then you have infinite late-game value with Lady Leodrin and the Libram's of Wisdom, not to mention two Libram's of Hope that could sometimes be three or four with Lady Leodrin, and an 8-mana 7-7 Rush Divine Shield uh, Taunt minion that draws you three cards to help you close out the late game and refill your hand. Also, you've got insane removal with Barov and Leave of Justice, along with one Broomstick and two City Taxes. If you play all of these things correctly, that's three complete board wipes your opponent cannot deal with, and then you have a prime for the late game. Like, this deck just has very few weak points, and I think it's probably one of the strongest decks in the game. The only deck it might lose to, um is just like Agar Druid that fills the board a bit too fast and you don't land on any elders. Number four is Face Hunter. Face Hunter with the Arcane Anomaly to be exact because you're able to play a lot of spells, whether it be the Coin or Doggy Biscuit or Wound Prey or any number of things, and not only does it continue to apply pressure to the board, but it pumps up the Arcane Anomaly to the point where it's very, very, very hard to deal with. Especially if you're able to get a Ramming Mount on it, then it just becomes basically impossible to kill, and even if you do kill it, you, your opponent, or you, depending on who's playing the face hunter, is left with a 2-2 on the board after that that they can continue to pump up, and then they just have good finishing power with quick shot and aim shot. The reason why I'm putting this, uh, and your hero power, and the reason why I'm putting this above Aggro Druid, which, spoiler alert, is number 5, is because it does pretty well against face hunter, and it does the best of a lot of the other decks against Warlock, because you're able to develop a really wide board, and you have good direct damage. Do I think that it's the perfect deck? No. Um, is Aggro Druid better in some ways? Yes. But I personally just like this deck a ton, and there's also some other versions out there that are running Drek'thar, and a lot of cheap minions, and taking out some of these four cost minions, so that way you could summon two things like Mukla um, from your deck, so you don't have to deal with the battle cry, along with the injured Blade Master, because it's, it's pretty cool. I haven't actually tried out this version yet, but you can potentially try it out yourself if you want to maybe cheese out some big minions. Next is Aggro Druid. I'd say it's number five, but it's still strong for all the reasons that it was strong before. Yes, Razor Man Battle Guard does die to a lot more removal now, from Warlock's Touch to Warrior's uh, Rancor to even 
a potential like quest hunter, right? You're able to hit it with your hero power or an arcane shot or something like that, along with probably sword and board and warrior as well. Tons more removal can now kill the Razor Mane Battle Guard, which means that it's at least a little bit more vulnerable to um, dying early game, right? So I think that the deck is still strong, but the nerf to the health of the Razor Mane Battle Guard hit a little bit harder than people thought it would. Overall, deck is still ridiculously strong and still a top five deck. It's relatively cheap, and if you want to play an aggro deck and you have most of these cards, I would still recommend it. But it's just a little bit weaker than it was before. Still like a 53% win rate or something on Hearthstone Replay, so it's definitely nothing to like overlook, but it's not as strong as it once was. Now into the bonus decks. We have Quest Rogue, which has a surprisingly high win rate, but a pretty low play rate. And that's because Rogue historically, well not historically, but like recently has been seen as a pretty bad class. In fact, I think it's the fourth worst class in the game right now. People are like, it loses to aggro and direct damage way too much. But if you complete the quest, you play Scabs, you give him um, stealth, and then you just slam him in the face and finish him off with Wicked Stabs, like that's at least nine damage. Not to mention the other rewards that you get off of completing the quest. And the fact that you could potentially bounce him back to your hand and get more stuff off of Shadow Step. The deck's actually really good. I want to play it. I, it's definitely the best rogue deck in the game right now by far. And it's actually arguably a top five deck. It's just because its play rate is a lot lower than some of the other decks. I can't quite put it in top five. But I put it as number six with the potential of being you know, top five, if, if it sees a little bit more play and we have a few more statistics to go on. But yeah, I really like this deck. It's good tempo. You can play it kind of controlled too because you have good things like Prize Plunderer along with some weapons, Wicked Stabs, SI Agents, Rush Minions to potentially have to deal with the board. I think it's a very intricate deck. I like it a lot and let's move on. Now this one surprised me. I don't like putting two decks of the same class on here, but I was genuinely surprised by the fact that Clown Druid has a 52% winner on Hearthstone and Replay. Statistically, it's like the 8th best deck in the game, and it doesn't see that much play. So I don't fully know how to ex like judge this deck, but I'm probably going to play it in the near future because its win rate is surprisingly high. And in the past, when I played it last season, before the nerfs came out, I think I ended up going 6-3 and three with it. It's a small sample size, but it shows the deck can win, and I actually like it a lot. You could potentially run... Um, Yasharaj as well, if you want to have a little bit more of a late game to get two more Carnival Clowns in case the opponent deals with it one or two times, but you don't have to. Usually Survival of the Fittest and Guardian Animals is enough to win the game, but it's up to you. You can try out whatever you would like. Overall, I want to try this deck out. I think it's quite strong, and yeah, the win rate was just surprising, so I put it on here. And last but not least is Elemental Shaman. I think it's a slightly worse version than something like Face Hunter um, because the direct damage is spells as opposed to Hunter, which can hero power and do a little bit of extra damage that way. But the board presence is really good. If you can get a Granite Forgeborn out on turn like three with the coin or on curve turn four or turn three with the Kindling Elemental. The most powerful play is Kindling Elemental turn one, coin, granite turn two, absolutely broken it's really really strong um but yeah you can deal with aggro decks at least to some extent because of the canal slogger basically it's a guaranteed six hp heal maybe even more if it gets to stick on the board or if you draw multiple copies and it's very very aggressive so if the opponent loses control of the board you can end them pretty quickly along with alakir the wind lord which is six more damage and a pretty sticky minion on the board so overall i think that this deck is pretty strong I don't think it's as strong as Face Hunter. I think it's a slightly worse version um, than Face Hunter, but you can definitely run it if you like Shaman. And there are certain situations where it'll shine more than Face Hunter. And actually, in the matchup against Face Hunter, this deck is favored because of the lifesteal and the extra minions you get on the board. So it's up to you. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It's the best way to support me. And I hope to see you guys in the next one because honestly, um, I really like making this content for you, and this new expansion is probably going to be super duper fun. I'm actually really excited about it.